1994, Rwanda experienced the horror of genocide. 22 years later, this country of just over 11 million people has risen out of the proverbial ashes to become the forerunners of the digital age on the continent. My name is Yelang Prujinka. Join me in Kigali, Rwanda as we focus on ICT on business in the city. Boasting world-class 4G network infrastructure and a young population coupled with progressive government policies, Rwanda is focused on ICT development. To speak to us about this is Alex Ntale, CEO of the Rwanda ICT Chamber. I think to be a leading ICT society, we play uh, in, in, a bigger, in a bigger sphere where we have um, our government our leadership to start with um, in 2000 laid out kind of ambitious uh, plan, uh, vision uh, of what it wanted the Rwandan economy to look like by 2020. Uh, we, we still have a few things to go, uh, but back then uh, what was laid out clearly was several types of reforms uh, they were geared at uh, transforming the country from uh, an agrarian economy to a knowledge-based economy. We need uh, to find another option. Um, we don't have a lot of minerals, so our leaders started thinking and we need to transform ourselves into a knowledge economy, a service-based economy that runs in our language on bits uh, rather than atoms. Uh, in the sense that if, if I'm exporting agriculture, there's a lot of uh, logistics that are involved. There's a lot of transport infrastructure that is needed. Now, some of it I can control within my borders, uh, but the moment I get outside my borders, it's hard for me to, uh, to control. But when it comes to uh, the, the bits, the ones and zeros, uh, once you lay the cables, it becomes easier uh, for you to move things every border uh, that touches Rwanda is connected to the internet. Every district is connected to the internet via fiber. And that was now the questions were, how do we transform? And that's where the ICT Chamber came in. Our flagship project, again, that we've worked with government uh, on, K-Lab, our Knowledge Lab, um, which is a facility where young entrepreneurs, innovators straight from high school or university, or even those that are out of work, that are trying to pivot their, their careers. You've heard of Uber here, uh, Facebook here, Google here, uh, Airbnb here. They're all great companies, they're good companies, but where are the African ones? And these are the skills, the same skills today are available online uh, through different uh, platforms like the MOOCs, uh, whether it's Coursera, EDX or Udacity, where young people through the connectivity again of the internet, they can learn and do the same things that are being done in, in, in Silicon Valley or in, uh, in Tel Aviv or in London.
with over 4 million subscribers and a 99% 4G network coverage, it is safe to say that MTN has enjoyed success in Rwanda. Let's meet the man at the helm of the operation, CEO Mr. Bart Hofke. Well, I think it is quite a mature market in, in terms of competition. For example, there are already three serious operators here, MTN, Tigo and Airtel. And there's one 4G operator, so they chose for the model that there is one 4G network, so there's no competition on 4G, and they sell it, that is uh, uh, Korean Telecom, and they sell it wholesale to the three operators. But, uh, but it is really going through, a, through al almost an explosion of growth in usage. And also revenue is growing now. If you look at Rwanda specifically, then 65% is under 24. And especially the younger generation is very perceptive of data users. But again, it is not only about data, even voice for small businesses to pick up a phone or not can, can make the difference between getting a new order, a new, uh, a new good business deal or not. And the more people realize that, the more businesses realize that, I mean, the, the, the more mobile will grow in popularity. MTN Rwanda is truly a Rwandan company. There's 62, 65,000 people working here, only three foreigners. And we're very closely related to, to, the, to embedded, I think, in society. So we are the market leader, so, so, so by, by definition, people always look first to, uh, to MTN Rwanda, in Rwanda. And the vision of the, of the government is, the mission or the ambition, is to become the digital hub of Africa, of the continent of Africa, or the knowledge center, the IT knowledge center of Africa. And that is, of course, so closely linked to our core business. As a market leader, you are part of your core of the ambition of the country. So that is the soft part. And then the hard part, we just have the best network, both in voice and in data. So in data coverage and speed. So that, is, that, makes, it, uh, that makes it a premium brand. The Rwanda Information Society Authority is tasked with preparing Rwandans to be competitive in an ever-evolving digital world. Innocent Muhizi expands on this initiative. And finally, Sam Nkusi puts ICT on the continent in full perspective. There are initiatives that have been achieved. Uh, but yes, they form the foundation of where we want to be. Uh, so we hope within uh, these remaining few years, we should be able to uh, close the gap to, to at least a considerable amount of uh, success. You need to be deliberate in everything that you do. Uh, deliberate in a sense that you have to deliberately train your people, because if you don't have enough uh, critical mass uh, human capital, uh, then it is impossible. Everything else that you're talking about is practically impossible. Number two, deliberate in a sense that what investments are you making? Um, for example, if there was no deliberate uh, attempt to lay fiber optic across the country, I wouldn't be where we are today. And by the way, it should not be misleading that to say that we have achieved everything, therefore everything is a hunky-dory. No. Uh, we've done humbly quite well, but there's a lot that still needs to be done. The business community in South Africa and the business community in Rwanda uh, can have uh, quite a good working relationship if, they, uh, if we look at it. Uh, because South Africa has not experienced uh, a market like Rwanda, which is unique. Uh, because a market that, you know, you bring a product, you have to make sure that it addresses both the people who speak English and people who speak French. South Africa does not have that understanding. So there's quite a lot they can learn from that. Number two, South Africa is a big market. So how do you position yourself, not only in a big market where you have critical mass uh, clientele and you know, all this. So in a small market, how, how do you learn how to position a product to make it successful? So uh, there's quite a lot that can be done in that, in that arena. And I think uh, it is one thing that I see that would push uh, not only Rwanda, but also South Africa. <laughs> Thank you. 
what are the needs for Africans in ICT for the future? Because we respond to that. Ours is connectivity, true broadband connectivity. You don't have to wait till cows come home so that you are connected. So mobile services, convergence of technologies, that is voice, video, data, TV. We heard about uh, our sister group, Kwesi. So everything is, is there. So we also do value-added services, Internet of Things, name it. We have a new project. Actually, I heard that it is called Liquid Sea. It comes from South Africa up to Cairo. And from there, we're going to connect to the rest of the world with affordable pricing. So just wait. Access and affordability is what we need. So tell the regulators, tell the governments to facilitate that in a true partnership style. That's what we need. In this episode, we focused on ICT development in Kigali, Rwanda. The focus, however, is not on individual countries, but on the collaboration between African states and developing and growing the ICT sector. In Rwanda particularly, the unique combination of a young population, a government that is eager to implement technology and ICT growth, a magic formula is found, and this can be and should be replicated on the balance of the continent. My name is Yelang Prujinka. Thank you for watching Access Africa Business in the City.